Just in. A young black guy has been falsely accused of having STDs because he broke up with his ex. I use the term black, so you guys will know that we black people are our own problem. Black women are the worst of the worst. Likewise, black dudes are the worst of simps. No proof, just a fabricated conversation, yet you went over to his house to threaten him. I'll send the conversation later. These women know they can get away with absolutely anything. Feminism gave these women this power, and they damn well know how to use it. If you don't like a man's face, you can just say he sexually harassed you, and he can rot in jail. If you don't like his perfume, he meets the same fate. Yes, jail. If he broke up with you, and you didn't want him to go because you're a narcissistic bitch, he deserves prison time too, which he will get. Here is the chat. This particular girl texted herself to try to make the convo look like the guy was having a conversation with her. I've seen this shit many times. In my past video about women hating their ex-husbands because they progressed after they divorced their husbands. Hear what one of them said. I'm 41 and still single, and my ex-husband is 41 and got remarried to a 31-year-old woman who is incredibly beautiful. They had their daughter three years ago. He bought a new house. My son loves going to his dad's to spend time with his other family, and I'm not gonna lie, it makes me jealous. She has it all. She took my husband, she took my kid, she took my life that was once all mine, and all I have is the house we created our family, and now I live in an empty house. I'm 41, I gained 20 pounds, I've got wrinkles, and I'm alone and miserable. I've had short-term relationships after the divorce, but they never worked out. Men just don't want an old woman like me with a child. And I've noticed that men with kids just have a better time dating with kids than we do. And I hate it. I'm not happy anymore. I wish I could go back when I was younger, and I would have stopped being so childish. Now I have such a miserable life. I work a useless job now, and I have to share custody of my son, where he has to spend time at my ex-husband's house with his new and improved wife. I feel like a dumpster standing right next to her. Those women are capable of shit like this. They are so narcissistic. Anyway, the girl sent the screenshot of the fake conversation to her friend to post it. The video got a lot of impressions as usual. Lies, especially false accusations, travel fast. A lot of simps went over to his house, started stalking the poor guy, and started sending him death threats. The guy was so fed up that he wanted to kill himself. Thank God his friends were there to stop him. Think about a lot of men who didn't have friends close to them they'd already be dead. Check the stat for 2024. We're still in the first month. Life is already hard for men. False accusations with no consequence are making things worse. Anyway, back to the news. The guy was forced to do a test to clear the air. Good thing it was all negative. At least he got proof that he isn't guilty as charged. This society is so messed up that it's guilty until proven innocent. Have we forgotten protocol? What is wrong with everyone? You can't just say someone is guilty without any proof. Doesn't make any sense. If you call that baseless conversation proof, then I don't know what to call you. Protect black men. Protect <laughs> black men. What you, what you say that, gang? What you say that? Protect black men, man. Test results. This is my name. This is my name. What you say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Come on now. Normal. Normal. Lock her ass up. You talking about her? Lock her ass up. You talking about her oh, oh. Lock I her never, ass I up. I never had her piece. Fuck. I never had HIV. Uh, oh my I never dick. Had dick. AIDS. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I cool. never stuck my dick in a dirty. Never. <laughs> yeah. Never. After the proof got sent out, guess what the accuser did? She privatized her account. No apologies, nothing. She ruined a man's life and ran back into her rabbit hole, waiting for the whole world to forget what she did. I hope the guy is sensible enough to sue them for defamation of character. He needs to sue them and everyone that threatened him. Things must stop being this way. I feel triggered by this news because I know of a guy that actually killed himself. He was falsely accused of rape because he rejected a lady's advances. The girl had a crush on the guy but he didn't feel the same way. She accused him of rape. Bam. Million impressions. The guy kept dropping proof of how innocent he was, but his tweets didn't get much impressions. He kept receiving death threats. 
He couldn't handle the heat and killed himself. The girl did the same thing. She set her account to private. Personally, I know that nothing will be done to those false accusers. What they don't know is that they're ruining the chances of real victims being heard. If a lot of girls are crying wolf, and there's no wolf, when a wolf actually comes, nobody will give a fuck. Not a single one. They say we live in a patriarchal society, yet we still have these double standards. If a man did what she did, he wouldn't be heard. He would be blamed for not using a condom, or for even having sex. Since it's a girl, she's perfect, and shouldn't have to be blamed for anything. She doesn't even get to face the court. Yeah, and she wasn't just accusing you of things, she's accusing a lot of other people of other stuff as well. But for you, you're 18 years old, you've done nothing to this woman, and suddenly you're faced with multiple rape and assault charges. What are you thinking? I was disgusted, like, I didn't know what was going on, I just felt horrified, I was scared. I didn't know. I, and then when I found out I was being sent to prison, I said to my mum, I'm not going to be coming out alive because I don't want to go to prison for if I, even if I did do something. So why do I want to go if I'm not doing something wrong? And you were put on the sex offenders wing of, of Preston Prison. Yeah. And you had to share a room with a paedophile. Yeah, and he told me he pleaded guilty to that offence. What was the offence? He sent pictures to an eight-year-old kid. What did you feel about having to share a cell with someone like that? I felt sick, like physically sick. Like. And you were there because the police had, had concluded that you must be guilty of similar behaviour? Yeah, and I applied for bail numerous times. My legal team applied for bail, like I think, like four times, and I was denied it every single time. And then I just got woke up one morning by the, the prison staff, and they said, you're in court. And I was confused because I didn't have any notice beforehand. And that's when I went to court and I got out on bail, but I wasn't allowed to go back to my hometown. I had to sign on the police station every two days. And people in your hometown thought you were a rapist? Yeah, I was named in the paper. What did they do? I had rapist spray painted on my house. I had my windows smashed. My mum had to move out of her house because of it all. It... And you spent 10 weeks in prison yourself? Yeah. So all this is going on and you're completely innocent? Yeah. Meanwhile, everybody knows you you're on the front page of the paper, you've been named, your family's name has been completely decimated by this, but your accuser, who's made it all up, she remained anonymous. Yeah, and this is one thing that really confuses me. Why did I get named? Like, but when she was remanded into prison, there was never an article put, she was charged with this, that and the other. Well, there was, but there was no name given. It was just a female. And. That's one thing I question a lot. Rape charge, one year in prison. That sentence tonight for the woman who falsely accused two football players from Sacred Heart University in Connecticut of rape. The students say what she did has changed their lives forever, even though they have been cleared of all wrongdoing. I'm News reporter Marcus Solis with our lead story tonight. He's live in Bridgeport. Marcus. That's right, Bill. Those two students were never arrested, never charged with any crime. But the accusation was serious enough, so much so they say they had to leave school, their reputation in tatters. She pursed her lips. She rolled her eyes. But Nikki Yavito's body language couldn't change the outcome. A year in jail for telling a lie, a lie that cost two young men their college careers. My life has been altered and shaped in ways that nobody here could have Malik St. Hilaire was never arrested, but Yavino claimed he and another student raped her while all three attended Sacred Heart University in 2016. Instead, it was the Long Island native who was charged when the police investigation revealed sexual activity had occurred but was consensual. Prosecutors say Yavino made up the rape claim because she didn't want to upset another student she was interested in. Her willingness to accept this, um, this, this plea deal reflects her accountability for what happened. But it wasn't that simple. At first, Yavino insisted she had been assaulted and rejected a plea deal. It was only during jury selection before trial that she changed her mind again and pleaded guilty. So I just hope that, you know, she knows what she's done and the fact that my life will never be the same. Like, I have anxiety, I have, like, PTSD from this. It's bad enough that they were accused of such heinous behavior, though never arrested. But then to have their, her story change over and over and over again, it's as if you were kicked while you were down. 
Well, the other student who chose to remain anonymous lost a football scholarship over this. Both men say they plan to sue Uvino in civil court. As for the criminal case, she has been in custody since that guilty plea in June. It will count as time served towards that one year sentence. And we're live in Bridgeport, Marcus Solis, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. <laughs> Okay, guys. We have to do it again. How y'all doing? Hi. All right. I'm David. I'll be your Uber driver. Hey, David. Hey, David. All right. Whoa, please don't look at us like that. Excuse no, me? That was that. Did you see what? that? Why do you keep looking back at us? Yeah. Excuse me? Like, you just don't have to turn. The links are in the description. See you next time. Cheers.